dust devils. These aren't technically tornadoes, but they're the gateway drug to atmospheric violence. It's a scorching day in Arizona 2010. Families are enjoying a baseball game when suddenly, a column of spinning air no wider than a truck materializes on the field. It looks almost playful, a dancing spiral of dirt and debris. But this harmless dust devil is packing 60 mile per hour winds. Tents launch into the air like missiles. Bleachers topple. People are injured by flying debris, all from something that appeared out of nowhere and vanished just as quickly. Dust devils are born from heat, not storms. When the sun bakes the ground, hot air rises and begins to spin. They're the atmosphere's way of saying, you think you understand weather? Think again. Before we dive deeper into nature's most violent phenomena, make sure you're subscribed and hit that notification bell. What we're about to explore gets progressively more terrifying, and you won't want to miss how these atmospheric monsters can literally rewrite the landscape. Trust me, by the end of this video, you'll never look at storm clouds the same way again. Landspouts. Now we enter true tornado territory, but these are the rebels of the tornado family. While most tornadoes descend from the sky, landspouts climb from the ground up. They're the bottom-up revolutionaries of severe weather. Colorado, May 2008. Farmers watch in horror as not one, not two, but over a dozen landspouts erupt across their fields in a single afternoon. Tractors flip like toys. Power lines snap. Dust clouds stretch for miles. These tornadoes don't follow the rules. No massive supercell overhead, no dramatic wall cloud, just sudden violent columns of wind rising from the earth itself. Landspouts are proof that tornadoes don't need permission from the sky to destroy your life. Cone tornadoes. This is the textbook tornado, the one etched in every nightmare. Wide at the top, narrow at the bottom, the perfect killing machine. These are the tornadoes that end up in documentaries, the ones that make meteorologists careers and destroy everything else. The cone shape is deceptive. It looks stable, predictable, but cone tornadoes are destroyers of neighborhoods, erasers of streets. They don't just damage, they consume. When you see that perfect cone descending from the sky, you're looking at organized atmospheric violence in its most efficient form, wedge tornadoes. And then there are the monsters. Wedge tornadoes are so wide, they look like the sky itself is falling. Joplin, Missouri, 2011. A wedge tornado over a mile wide rips through the city. The death toll, 161 people, entire hospitals gutted. Neighborhoods erased so completely that survivors couldn't find where their homes once stood. Wedge tornadoes don't just destroy, they rewrite geography. Some tornadoes have evolved for specific environments, becoming specialized killing machines, water spouts. When tornadoes find water, they become something else entirely. Water spouts are tornadoes' aquatic cousins, and they're just as deadly as their land-based relatives. Florida Keys, 2013. Tourists film in awe as a waterspout unfurls offshore, a graceful column connecting sea to sky. But grace is an illusion. Boats are lifted and capsized. Fish are sucked hundreds of feet into the air. When waterspouts move ashore, they bring oceanic fury to land, tearing roofs and injuring children with flying debris. The ocean doesn't tame tornadoes, it feeds them. Fire tornadoes. This is where nature reveals its cruelest fusion, wind and flame, joined as one. Fire tornadoes, or fire nados, are born when wildfires create their own weather systems. Car Fire, California, 2018. A fire tornado rises over 1,000 feet into the sky winds inside topping 140 miles per hour. This isn't just fire, it's a rotating column of flame, 
that launches burning debris miles ahead of the fire line. Cars overturn, steel beams twist like licorice. A firefighter loses his life. Fire tornadoes create their own lightning within the flames. They are dragons made real, proof that the atmosphere can weaponize any element against us. Just when you think you understand tornadoes, nature breaks its own rules. Anti-cyclonic tornadoes. In the Northern Hemisphere, tornadoes spin counterclockwise. That's the rule. But sometimes rules are meant to be broken. Illinois, 1995. A supercell spawns not one, but two tornadoes. One spinning the correct way, another spinning clockwise. These mirror image monsters tear across fields in opposite directions, confusing even veteran storm chasers. Anti-cyclonic tornadoes feel unnatural, like watching a film played in reverse. They're harder to forecast, harder to track, and their rarity makes them more dangerous because we understand them less. Satellite tornadoes. Imagine escaping the main tornado. The roar fades, relief floods your chest, and then another funnel spins down beside the first. Satellite tornadoes are the smaller vortices that orbit larger ones, like moons circling a planet of destruction. Moore, Oklahoma, 2013. A massive EF-5 tornado rampages across the city, but it's not alone. Several smaller satellites swirl around it, doubling the danger zone. Schools collapse, subdivisions are obliterated. 24 lives lost. Satellites don't follow the same path as their parent. They strike from unexpected angles, turning survival into a game of deadly chance. Not all tornadoes are created equal. The enhanced Fujita scale measures their fury from EF0 to EF5, but each level represents an exponential leap in destructive power. EF0 to EF1, the beginners. These might seem manageable, but they're still tornadoes. EF0, snap tree branches and peel shingles. EF1 can flip mobile homes and shatter windows. They're the atmosphere's warning shots. EF2 to EF3, the destroyers. Now we're in serious territory. EF2 rip roofs, completely off houses. EF3 reduce well-built homes to rubble piles. This is where tornadoes stop being weather events and become disasters. EF4, the obliterators. EF4 tornadoes don't just destroy buildings, they erase them. Well-built homes are swept off their foundations entirely. Trees are stripped of bark. The ground itself is scoured. Only underground shelters provide real protection. EF5. The unmakers, these are the apex predators of the atmosphere. EF5 tornadoes exceed 200 miles per hour and have no upper limit. They don't just destroy, they unmake. Steel reinforced buildings crumble. Pavement is ripped from roads. Entire communities vanish, leaving only bare slabs and the memory of what once was. The Bridge Creek Moor Tornado of 1999 recorded winds of 301 miles per hour, the highest ever measured on Earth. At that point, you're not in a storm. You're inside a force of nature so powerful that physics itself seems to bend. Scientists whisper about EF6 tornadoes, theoretical monsters beyond our current scale. These would be tornadoes so powerful they could displace anchored structures, rip pavement from roads, and alter terrain itself. We may have already witnessed them without recognizing their true strength. The Tri-State Tornado of 1925 traveled 219 miles and killed nearly 700 people. Modern analysis suggests it may have reached EF6 intensity, but we'll never know for certain. Some knowledge is too terrible to confirm. From dust devils, to theoretical EF6 monsters, tornadoes represent the full spectrum of atmospheric violence. They're proof that our planet is not the peaceful blue marble we imagine, but a dynamic, dangerous world where the sky itself can become our enemy.
The next time you see green skies and feel that unnatural stillness, remember, you're not just witnessing weather, you're seeing the atmosphere prepare for war. And in that war, we are not the victors. The sky will spin again. The question is, will you be ready? Subscribe for more explorations into the forces that shape our world. And remember, nature doesn't negotiate.